Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a problem on polynomials. We have p of x equals a x to the seventh power plus b x to the third power plus two. So p of x is a polynomial. A and b are real coefficients. And we are also given that p of 11 is equal to five. And we are supposed to find p of negative 11. So let's take a look. With polynomials, substitution is always, you know, a standard method. So we're going to start by replacing x with 11 here. So if you replace x with 11 on both sides, you get a times 11 to the seventh power plus b times 11 to the third power plus 2. And we're given that p of 11 is equal to 5. Okay. Now, this gives you an equation. Obviously, 11 to the seventh power is a very large number. You don't want to evaluate that. And 11 to the third power is also a large number, not that large in comparison. But uh, we're trying to find p of negative 11. So could we find a relationship that'll make our you know, job easier? You can go ahead and replace p x with negative 11 and see what happens. Uh, if you do, you're going to get a times negative 11 to the seventh power plus b times negative 11 to the third power plus 2. And then that's what I'm trying to find. So this is what I'm looking for. But look, notice that I don't have the values of a and b. So maybe one of the questions we should ask is, can I find the values of a and b from this equation? And the answer is no, because there are two variables and we only have one equation. But one thing we can do is we can just go ahead and isolate some of the terms. So we can write this as 11 to the seventh power a plus 11 to the third power b. And since plus 2 is equal to 5, it's just going to be uh, 3. If you subtract 2 from both sides, then you're going to get our expression to equal 3. OK, that's the first finding. Now, is there any way I can use that finding to evaluate p of negative 11? So I, I could probably show you two approaches here that is going to work nicely. But let me go ahead and talk about the first approach first. So this is what I got, and then I need to find this expression right here. So how would I find p of negative 11? So let's go ahead and work that out a little bit, make it nicer, and make it look like our expression. So p of negative 11. Now notice that 7 is an odd number. So when you raise a negative number to an odd power, the answer is going to be negative. So we can basically write this as negative 11 to the seventh power multiplied by a. And the same thing goes for negative 11 to the third power. So we can write it as minus 11 to the third power multiplied by b. And then plus 2 is what I'm trying to find. So this is what I'm looking for. Can I find some relationship? And uh, the answer is yes. Now notice that our expression is very similar to this, except that both of these terms are negative. So how about I pull out a negative 1, and then inside the parentheses, I should get something nice. Well, what is that equal to? Now this expression, I know what it is. It is equal to 3 right here. So if that is equal to 3, and if you negate it, that's going to be a negative 3 plus 2 is going to be the answer. So p of negative 11 from here is just going to be negative 1. So that should be the answer, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at a second approach. So my second method involves the following. So let's go ahead and write down what we have so far. Uh, we have p of 11. And that is equal to 11 to the seventh a plus 11 to the third b plus 2, right? And we know that is equal, it's equal to 5. Great. So I know that. And I'm trying to find p of negative 11. Let's write down p of negative 11. That could be written as negative 11 to the seventh a uh, plus, actually, that should be a minus sign, minus 11 to the third b, and then, of course, plus 2. Notice that 2 is a constant, so we're always going to add the 2 at the end. OK, now I'm trying to find this value. So let's go ahead and call that, I don't know, uh, something besides x and a, probably a, b. How about k? OK, good. So in order to find the answer, and so I'm looking for k, basically. I'm going to be adding two, these two equations. When I add them, these two are opposites that are going to cancel out. These two are opposites that are going to cancel out. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, and 4 is equal to 5 plus k. Remember that I'm looking for k, and from here, 
k is equal to negative 1. Therefore, that is the answer. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.